Hello? Hi. How's it going? Uh, that's alright. I love you. I'm, I'm livid. You're living or livid? I'm living. Oh, okay, because it's a very big distinction. I'm, I'm livid. I sound very kind of complacent for someone who's supposed to be livid. Well, sometimes people say what they are and then they're not actually. See, this is supposed Pe- to be the Ram Show. People would never we say lie. that we're on the Ram Show. We're supposed to ramble, but instead we're reading an ebook. That's a great <laughs> intro to a show. What a trick. It's like the Tide Pod ad where at the end they're like, nope, it's a Tide Pod. Not sponsored ad. by Tide. No. Nah. <laughs> Thanks for throwing that in anytime we name any sort of product ever. Yes, this Dr. Pepper pop can sitting on the desk is product placement for the YouTube video. It's not. Not a sponsor. Like, I know I don't, I'm pretty sure I don't have to say that, but I just like to slip that in there just to remind just everyone that we're. really official. Yeah, and it's like we're we're yeah, community, it and so it's it's it allows us to justify doing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, keep sounding keep like keep idiots on yourself air. That uh, for anyone that <laughs> idiots on air, <laughs> that could be another great name for a show. Uh, by the way, you're listening to eighty nine point five W A H S Auburn yeah, Hills, and this is the Ram curious. Show episode fourteen. Yeah, if you were curious, that's just the technical. Stuff. And I'm and we're still reading that. a book. Mumbo Jumbo. We're still reading a book. <laughs> If you're um, watching or partaking in the YouTube video currently or the live stream that nobody ever watches ever. Except um, you, Jim, we, Jimmy. We mostly just use it for like technical reasons. Anyways, if you're watching uh, the YouTube video, hi. <laughs> thanks thanks for watching the YouTube video. We'll keep doing more of these and uploading them on a channel. On my channel. River is so sure that this is going to make us famous. It is. You're like, you're so hyped. Well, you can't tell them that. No, it's not going to happen. Good. You jinxed it. Good. Um, I'm glad. My appearance is a little bit bloated. I got my wisdom teeth out last Wednesday. It's not affecting my voice, luckily. It was a bit hard to, like, at the peak swollenness, it was a bit hard to move my mouth. Mm -hmm. Um, But I, I, I will continue on. I will brave the pain for the people. Did you only have four? I had four, and I had a chain attached to a tooth that is stuck in my gums so they can like pull oh. it up over time nice yeah it's really nice it's really nice classic they said two to three days recovery and i was like no nah, i'm <laughs> doing it in one because when they said two to three days recovery they meant two to three days recovery as in like pain and like staying in bedtime yeah i did do it in one like i was ready that like that by the end of the night like the night that it happened i was up playing video games like i was like i never really felt any pain but like the swollenness i could last for like a week yeah it's been like four or five days now yeah because they ripped right. they ripped six teeth out of my face <laughs> when i got mine removed because i had two extra like little baby ones oh, just that were chilling. like popcorn kernels yep. like way up in my jaw just chilling uh, and then my stitches fell out so it was just lots of yeah, blood and it was a bad time i don't i said i didn't get dry socket though thank goodness dumb. yeah my brother did was i was terrified. very scared of that because like the first night i came mm-hmm. home i started like spitting in the sink and then my mom's like that's how you get dry socket and i got all, like paranoid i was like mom can you give me a cup of blood <laughs> like can i just can I, can I just like drink some blood and maybe i don't think you're supposed to drink it like, could that like work kind of just like sc- uh, swish it around in there? okay this is bad imagery for the viewers uh so we're going to continue our our um adventure book choice of broadsides do you, mm-hmm. I think you're all about me reading the authors because it makes you feel official. I, I just don't want to like be stealing other people's content. You know, I at least want to give credit where credit is due. Yeah, I don't so, want to get sued. Uh, thank you to uh, the choice team who make all of the different choice of fill in the blank uh, books. Mm-hmm. Thanks to the uh, lead writer for this one is Adam Strong Morse with uh, Heather Albano and Dan Fabulich. I'm probably going to be able to like recite that next time without looking it up. Um, yep. Thanks to the whole team behind this adventure book for making said adventure book, so we can go on said adventure. It's been a blast. In the book, uh, yeah, literally been a blast, blast yeah. when you stuff two cannonballs into a cannon and decide to launch it. Uh, picking up where we left off. Wow, it feels like it's been a while. Okay, wait. So, so what? What are we? What was the last thing we were doing? Um. <laughs> I rem- we're great it, at this whole. We were like write it like a show. big decision, uh, and I remember it was really intense because we've we we had a break off of school for a little bit. Oh yeah, we're in the fight. Okay, so this is you and your platoon of men that you've just given under your command, uh, sneaking onto the mm-hmm. beach in the middle in the midst of night, mm-hmm. so that way you can then attack a trade ship which has been docked on a tiny island. It's not like a civilized island; it's just like a random island. <laughs> but um, the Gauls 
who are mortal en enemies of Albion, mm -hmm. are um, just like there. They use it as like a restocking point. So there's like two ships there, but mm -hmm. we want to steal one of them because it has the booty on it. Um, and the you're a, just a lieutenant, but the captain of the ship gave you a. Uh, I can't. I can't uh, what do they call it? They keep using a really strange word for like a instead of platoon or squad. They call it's it like a, a crew. No, they don't even call it that. Uh, they call it something weird. Uh, we'll see. Uh, yeah, they gave you of like I think thirty men. I think they gave you like twenty or thirty men. I don't know. All um, I know is that I'm just absolutely terrified of this. Yeah, because, you're not a great fighter because I have no combat your, savvy your whatsoever. Fighting is fifty two percent. Well, it's not actually nothing. It's just very average. Um, your gunnery is forty nine, but that's for your ship. Your your fighting isn't terrible. Your leadership's a okay though. And your bloodthirst is fifty seven. So I mean, I don't even think you're going to be that bad of a fighter at all. We'll see. <clears throat> now, now that's hardly the spirit Albion want. Heart, now, now that's hardly the spirit Albion wants to see in its naval officers. I have to get into my reading. Because um, mm. the last uh, thing, the last thing I responded to was. I'm a little bit worried, yeah. but I'm going to, I'm going to try and <laughs> Yeah, be you were honest to your com captain and you yeah. were like, yeah, I'm scared. Like yeah. instead of being like, yeah, I got this. You were just straight up like, yeah, man, this is, this is rough. Uh, you give serious thought on, uh, to how you will organize your men. And then you go to brief the ones who have been assigned to you. They consist of two midshipmen and 40 sailors. Okay. So you have 42 men. Um, what's the difference between a midshipman and a sailor? I think a mid midshipmen are like commanders. Like they, they command. Yeah, because we've been a midshipman. Yeah, and you were so like we're telling, like special, you were giving right? orders to people how to run the cannon. So mm -hmm. I, guess, I assume that's what a, a yeah. midshipman is. It's like a tiny officer. Like what's below <laughs> well, the well, itty bitty. Yeah, because I know how the military um, works. I know terms. We will take two boats. Uh, we will take two boats, you explain. I shall command one with Mr. Midshipman Stewart to assist me. Mr. Midshipman Mason will command the other. My, but why do you have to say Mr. before? Wouldn't it just be Midshipman Mason? Like, Mr. Midshipman. That's like when people say Mr. Doctor. Like, no. Mr. Doctor Professor. <laughs> Mr. Doctor Professor Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll command the other. My boat shall come along the starboard, uh, starboard side of the Gaulish vessel, and Mr. Midshipman Mason along the port side. We will climb aboard secretly and then attack from two sides with plenty of shouting to frighten the spineless mm. Gaulish boys. Ooh. Don't forget the shouting. Frighten the spineless Gaulish boys. The men grin. You pause. You know that one of the three officers must be made responsible for cutting the anchor cable so that your men will be able to sail the Gaulish ship out to where HMS Courageous uh, waits. Another must be responsible for ascending the rigging and loosing the top sail to get the ship underway. And a third must be responsible for taking over the steering of the ship. There are three, di there are three officers available. You and two midshipmen. Which do you want to do yourself? Okay, which of the three jobs? It's basically like priority assigning. Yeah. Uh, option one, cutting the cable is the most important job. It will have to be done while uh, it'll have to be done while hand to hand fighting is still raging on the deck. I will take responsibility for it myself. Option two, sending the rigging to loose the top sail is both important and dangerous. It will require iron nerves and great agility to climb uh, to that unsteady height in the dark while fighting rages on below deck i will take responsibility for it myself steering the captured prize back to courageous is the proper job for officer in command i will take re responsibility for myself okay that one's definitely the most obnoxious so your options are the the most uh the most frantic one to do the most difficult one to do and the one that's proper for a captain those are your three <laughs> options like I, i'm really conflicted because obviously cutting the anchor is like really important. If you don't mm -hmm. do it, you can't yeah. leave. And you have to do it in the midst of fighting. Right. So, so I think we like should basically think of, consider nothing. your stats. Um, yeah, but I'm thinking like I'm a like sailing a, man. Yeah, you, you are know? a good sailing man. So, so I'm thinking maybe I should go th do the difficult thing and just and, really and, hope the other officers can like. But at the beginning of the of the book, we did find out uh, when they like fell off the top and one of them like died because one of the guys was up there cutting the sails and he yeah. fell and there wasn't even any fighting going on when that happened. He just fell because like there was wind or something. You I'm have not, to do this while fighting. I'm not gonna die. Sure, it's not like oh okay. I'm. I'm Mitchell Payne. Uh, I'm Setting the rigging to loose top sails both important and dangerous. It will require iron nerves and great agility to climb on the unsteady height. To that unsteady height in the dark while fighting rages on below deck, I will take responsibility for it myself. Once we are aboard Mr. Midshipman Mason, it shall be your task to fight your way to the anchor cable and cut it 
through re- uh, through releasing the Gaul ship from its mooring. You continue. Mason pales slightly, but nods. I shall send the rigging and loose the topsail to get the ship underway, you say. You see some of the men's eyes widen with admiration. Not many officers would volunteer for such a dangerous task. Nice. Got You're getting em. a little... Uh, Leadership. Uh, yeah, patronage. And, or not patronage, but like tact maybe. Mr. Mm. Mitchell. Oh, yeah, you don't have any tact. No. So this is... I'm a weak little... You need this. You need this moment. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Midship and Stewart, it shall be your task to make your way directly to the wheel and steal the prize out of harbor once we've taken her. Aye, aye, sir, Stewart says crisply. I like that. It's a good word. Crisply. Um, Now, you you men, you'll each be provided with a pistol and a cutlass. We will leave at four bells. You will be roused. Before dismissing them, you think over the plan. Is there anything else you need to say? Probably. Oh, yes, of course. You nearly forgot. Mind you, keep those pistols at half cock until I give the order otherwise. We don't want there to be any risk of a shot going off before we're aboard. Dismissed. The next few hours pass nervously nervously as you go over your plan again and again. Finally, four bells sounds and you hasten to the deck to take command of your party along the way. You encounter Bryce, who seems a little nervous too. All in readiness, Mr. Smith, he asks. Yes, sir, Mr. Bryce, you say. You've, get, uh, you've, set some, you've set someone to climb the rigging and loose the topsail, right? And someone to cut the cable? Yes, sir. And there's an officer responsible for the s- steering? Yes, sir. You've told the men to keep their danged pistols half cocked until you give the word all we need uh all we need is a premature shot to give away the game yes sir i've told them nicely done mr smith you seem to have thought of everything your half of the mission is uh, your half of the mission is in good hands uh bryce smiles looking only a little strained good luck to you to you too sir you say and go to the shep uh, go to shepherd your men in the boat so i I think like your leadership and Mm -hmm. like ability and all that kind of paid off there i feel like if you didn't have those good stats uh, mm-hmm. in that area, you might have like failed on one of those. I might have like missed the pistol thing. Yeah, you might have. Like I might have just gone right by and that, and that would have been an shot issue. Shot their foot off while they were climbing aboard. Yep. <clears throat> oh, heat of the action. The oars skim smoothly over the water, and then the men obediently keep quiet. You can feel your heart hammer in your throat as the great dark shapes of the Gaulish ships loom overhead, and you hope your hand doesn't shake on the tiller. It is your responsibility to get the boat close enough to board the merchant vessel without letting their lookout see anything. You hope your sailing ability is up to the task, which we know it is because that's like your number Mm -hmm. one thing. Sweat pours down your face as you navigate up close to the starboard starboard side of the Gaulish ship. To your profound relief, no one aboard notices a thing. Pistols cocked, you order in a whisper. Oh, in a whisper. Uh, you look up above you at the chains that snake up the ship's side, shining silver, and then disappearing into darkness. It's time. Do you lead, or do you order Stuart to lead so you can supervise the men as they board? I'm a leader. I, I'm the officer in command. I won't ask anyone to do what I will not do myself. I lead. I need to be sure that my men understand their duties correctly. I order Stuart to lead. I'm a leader. I'm going to lead. Come on, man. Well lead. said. Follow me, you whisper as, loud, <laughs> you whisper as loudly as you dare. Follow me. Like, give me your most like loud whisper. Follow me. Wait, that's not that's loud. Because it's still it's still a whisper. Follow me. And then spring into your feet, catch hold of the chains. Behind you, you can hear your men following as quietly and quickly as they can manage. You make it to the top of the heavy chains, pull yourself up over the side of the deck, and come face to face with a wide eyed, white faced boy. He is too startled and frightened to shout now, but he will recover in no more than an instant, and most of your men are still standing in the chains behind you. What do you do? Shoot him. Hit him across the face with the pistol, hopefully knocking uh, knocking him out without killing him. He's only a child. I can't hurt him for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm not gonna say anything. This is all you. I don't. This is no. An don't put this on moment. me. I can't. I can't shoot a kid, man. What? No. Um. Okay. You I, are Mr. Horatio Smith, Smithy. You. Hit. Our lieutenant, you've been in the Navy for three years. You are 26 I, years old. Make the decision. I'm going to have to balance, you know, uh, like, yes, logically, best case scenario. I w- well, maybe I need to, because pistols take a long time to reload. So I'm going to save that. So I'm just going to whack him with it. Just, just put Hopefully him out for a second. Hopefully knocking him out. But I can't just, like. Hopefully your fighting is high enough. I can't just, like, not do anything. Because you have to think. This is an enemy vessel. It may, it may be a child, but. You also have all your men at risk. Yeah, like this is kind of a big You have deal. to weigh your 42 men and the other 40 on the other side of the ship right. over 
this one Gaulish kid. Yeah, so he he signed up for this. He can at least get a slap in the face. You don't he's, know if he signed up for it. You not, didn't sign up to be a, a sailor at three years old. At three years old? Maybe I did. Maybe. So we're already practicing my signature. <laughs> Just whack him. He falls backward, making no more noise than a soft thump when he hits the deck. Mouth, o- mouth open as if in surprise and blood running down his face. Your men pull themselves... Your men pull themselves over the ship's side as quietly as possible. You wait until a good number are beside you, then take a deep breath. For Albion, you shout and give me a good give me a good for Albion shout. For Albion. <laughs> for Albion. And then just charge. <laughs> All your men. Yay. You may, you may charge em. now. We're gonna fight them real good. Yeah. Gonna get them. Gonna the get most good. the most stale like pirate <laughs> fight. Like in the movies, there's lots of like loud guns and like screaming and everything. There's mm-hmm. like yeah, get yeah. him! Bang, bang, stab, cling, cling! Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, you shout and plunge into the confused mass of galls caught unprepared by your surprise attack. I feel like you're rolling all twenties on this. Like this is going great. Yeah, I'm doing pretty well. You cut to the left and the right with your sword, shouting as loudly as you can. At first, the galls scatter before you, but then they begin to regroup. One rushes you from the left and turn, and you turn and plunge your sword into his chest. He falls, but there is another driving in from the right, closing fast. Oops, open Snapchat. He falls, but there's another diving. There's another uh, diving in from the right, closing fast as you struggle to extricate your blade from his dead shipmate. It's a good word. Extricate. What do you do? I use all my strength to wrench my sword free and then turn and fight. I can't waste an instant. I abandon my sword and turn to fight with my pistol. There isn't enough time. I dodge to the left. Um. These all seem like great options. I use all my strength to wrench the sword free and then turn and fight. Am I very strong? I can't waste an instant. I abandon my sword and turn to fight with my pistol. There isn't enough time. I dodge to the left. You don't have anything on strength. I mean, you have bloodthirst 57, uh, fighting 52%, which are reasonably high. Actually. Yeah. Um, you don't have you have gunnery forty nine percent, but I'm, I assume the gunnery is in response to the ships, not yeah. your pistol. I feel like the pistol is like an instant kill. I mean, if you don't use it, you're never gonna know if you're gonna need it later. Whereas yeah, like it's it's it like a now, one time thing. Yeah, like but I, if you use it now, you might have to like reload later, which is difficult. Or you could just try to dodge can to the I, left. I could just try to dodge. You like, are caught off guard, though. So. It's up to you. But like, I'm gonna waste more time. Like, I feel like the the sword thing is like a total temptation. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the gun thing is also a temptation. I feel like the gun like is the easy you. way out. Yeah. But it's, it's a guaranteed success. You don't know if you're going to need it later. And what mm-hmm. if you don't need it later? Then you just kind of like never use it. I'm, I'm going to take a risk. Dodge. You're going to dodge. Dodge. Steel whistles past your ear, but you move so fast that it only slices through your sleeve, not your arm. You leap over the fallen Gaul's body, jerk your sword free, and turn. But by the time that the man who thought you would... Thought to attack you is already engaged with someone else. You turn your attention back to the task at hand, fighting your way through the mass of bodies to the main mast. Well, that went well. Yeah. You've almost (laughs) reached your goal when you find your way when you find your way blocked by two massive angry gulls standing shoulder to shoulder. You aim your pistol, and just then out of the corner of your eye, you see Mason fighting a desperate duel on the other side of the deck. If Mason falls, his task will go uncompleted. On the other hand, if you spend your bullets to save his life, you will be out of ammunition, and then you will have to fight both gulls with just your sword. If they cut you down, your task will go uncompleted. What do you do? I am confident in my ability to win any sword fight, even two-on-one. It is my responsibility to see the safety of those under my command. I turn and fire at Mason's attacker. Mason can take care of himself. He is a well-trained officer of the Royal Navy. It is my responsibility to see my own part of the mission successfully executed. I fire at one of the Gauls in front of me. See, those are my favorite parts in pirate movies and, like, Pirates of the Caribbean when they're in, like, the fights and they're just, like, spinning and firing and, like, they're all helping each other out. Like, mm-hmm. those are the best moments. Like, they'll be right about to die and then Johnny Depp will come out of nowhere and, like, mid-sword fight just, like, shoot behind him and hit someone, like, not even those, paying attention. That's it. Those all never about, make sense It's all me. about, like, your vi- your awareness. Like, how well are you able to use the whole deck, not I, just who you're fighting. I really wonder I how those actually best. turned out. Like in real life, no, because nothing like that. Not like. Well, I don't know. I like to think so. It like seems like in, just such a big, like friendly like fire an assa- issue in Assassin's Creed Black Flag. You'll be in like a sword fight with like three people. You'll be dodging, but then you can also just press the gun button out of nowhere and just be like, bang. Yeah, that's how easy it is. That's a great game. You they press have the really, button. They have really good combos. Not um, a sponsor. Uh, oh, 
<laughs> All right, so uh, one on one on two well, with the sword, he's or the, uh, you need your bullets. He's the yourself. anchor guy, right? I mean, so we have to do that. Yeah, but if you die, not only are you is your task not going to happen, you're also going to I don't know die. No, I'm a I'm a I'm a leader. Confident. I'm a good guy. Help him. I'm gonna I'm gonna help him out. Mason's attacker drops like a stone. The other thing I was considering, if if it was another temptation, and then they were just gonna have you miss, so it was like a double <laughs> fail. Um, <laughs> Mason's attacker drops like a stone. Mason looks over wide eyed, and then gives you an awkward nod of thanks and scrambles to his task. You meanwhile turn back to see two large galls with drawn swords charging at you. You howl an <laughs> you howl an incoherent <laughs> cha incoherent challenge and rush to meet them. <laughs> <laughs> like i feel like that was written for someone to feel really cool like yeah but it's, i just imagine you like oh no i'm gonna get you yeah. <laughs> uh it's hot in here i should like i need to oh. wait are we the are we the albions or are we the gall the albions the, the galls albions? are are like remember we had that whole theory that you're secretly a gall boy oh yeah was, like, that i was that i was born in the gall and then and i was like literally sent like, over on a little raft that's literally like the theme behind pirates of the caribbean yeah you mean moses <sighs> I, I i have to do it's hot. I'm, just gonna, Long, silent. I'm just gonna make the silence pause. extra awkward just to make him feel bad about having to pause the show i'm done good <clears throat> Mm. Mm. The narrator. What if you're reading an ebook and just in the middle of the ebook he's like, "Yeah, sorry, I gotta go to the bathroom." I know. And I've you always just, wondered like, that. Hear him like walking around in the back, like doors opening, and closing. Mm -hmm. You hear the flush. He comes back. He's like, "Okay, let's keep going." <clears throat> you howl an incoherent challenge and rush to meet the men. Steel clangs against steel, and pain scores across your left leg as one of the galls lands a blow. You are not fighting by any honorable rules now, but desperately for your life, using elbows and knees as well as the blade of your sword. You manage to elbow one gall in the throat, and he falls back, choking choking curses. That gives you the opportunity you need to wound the other slightly and run before he recovers. At last, you disentangle yourself from the fighting and make it for the rigging. Good job. Oh. The fighting rages below you as you make your way up the rigging. Your heart pounds in your ears. Climbing isn't exactly your strong suit after all. Why exactly did you volunteer for this? <laughs> the movie didn't have a climbing stat. Wait, is there a climbing stat or was no. that the other book? No, we didn't have that. Because I remember no, it was probably was the, the other, other book yeah, that no, had a climbing stat. We don't stat. have that in this one. I remember it was just so specific. I was like, <laughs> what do you mean climbing? Like, it's obviously going to come into play later. <laughs> Why exactly did you volunteer for this? Making your way out onto the yard, uh, yard arm? You darn. I'm sorry for any of you boat aficionados out there that are like... There's there's a lot of them listening, I'm sure. The, the, the why is silent uh, is one of the most terrifying <laughs> things you've ever done. But you manage it, and the top sail flutters free. You are just rolling I 20s. Am, like I'm you doing You are this. succeeding. You have gotten so much better from the beginning where you stuffed two cannons into a cannon. <laughs> yeah. Into a cannon. Like, yeah, this will work. Well, I had those extra years of experience. <laughs> You're being 26. held back. Yeah. You're a wee lad. Well, because remember, I was going to do this sooner, but I failed the test, and like I had to wait like an extra like three years. You have three actual years of experience in mm -hmm. in like the navy, but you've had like your entire. Life. I've been doing this my whole life. Had twenty three ever since I was you've three. Had like twenty three years. Yeah. Uh, you let yourself down and hand over. Uh, let yourself down hand over hand to the deck below, just as the gall starts running to your men. You take prisoner. You take prisoner those who still live. Get the prize underway and take her safely back to Courageous. Wow, you are bad. Got him batting 100 uh Easy. bryce's prize beats you there by no more than a few minutes oh you took two ships mm -hmm. oh we had two teams oh, I, I thought it was one. i thought it was two on one not oh. both ships wow you guys are wow okay uh no more than a few minutes you and he meet on deck and he looks as flushed and giddy as you feel you reach over to shake his hand and he squeezes yours warmly brilliant the captain says Ooh, I feel, brilliant is a great brilliant i feel like he should have like a really absurdly english voice brilliant brilliant <laughs> the captain says in approval very nicely done indeed the two of you he orders you and bryce to take command of your prizes and sell them to albion adding with a smile that he would be much surprised if you did not each receive a promotion to commander hey. we're finally gonna get our own ship uh, Horatio. Uh, and indeed, the Admirality promotes you to the rank of commander. It is a proud moment indeed when you first walk down a street in Chesterport with an... E uh, how do you pronounce that? 
I think right. the E's let's, silent. Paulette, epulet, ep, ep, epulet, ep, pinned to your left shoulder. I, I think like the T is silent, so it's like an epulet or something like that. <laughs> I hate Gotta you. just do like mock Ebule, French epulé. An ep? No, an ep is something else. How, how an ep is a a sword. With or is that like a move? In with fancy? a fancy thing on your shoulder. Yeah. Just Classic fancy American things. <laughs> with with a shiny piece of metal pinned to your left shoulder, and now you are eligible to command a sloop of your a slew of your own and receive the courtesy title of captain. Well done, Captain Smith. Finally, back to. To Captain Hood. I feel like there was like some series of choices we could have made at the beginning that would have avoided all of this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we just it, it, essentially, like... the entire book is about you being a captain, but like if you consistently keep <laughs> failing, they just have to keep like, come on, here you go. And then like the final ones, like if you can push over this can, we'll let you be a captain. Yeah, like. But just... then your second choice is to refuse. <laughs> you're like, okay, you die. That's yeah, it. That's so just the, the book end. ends. Like we tried, you know, we can't save you anymore. You experience the greatest thrill of your life when you step onto the deck of your uh, of your first command, H.M. Slew Hotspur. That's what you named your, your Hotspur? ship? Hotspur? Really? I'm really, sorry. Mitch? Hotspur? That's the best uh, you should have. With? I'm usually pretty Horatio, good with names. Horatio, really? Okay, wh- what do you want me to name it? I'll replace it from now on. Um, uh, Name it uh, Hotspot instead. So it's similar, but just a little bit different. Hotspot. H.M.S. <laughs> Hotspot. You got some good <laughs> Wi-Fi on there? Yeah. Free, free, free Wi-Fi for everyone HMS who we plunder. HMS Hotspot. You are very pleased indeed <laughs> by what you... That's going to be the title of the YouTube video. Uh, you are very pleased indeed by what you observed there. She is a gleaming... Uh, she is a gleaming, almost new slew that reportedly handles like a charm. Crewed by good men, obviously accustomed to working well together. A plum command, particularly for a few co- uh, for a new commander like such as yourself. That night, you dream of all the fine things you will do now that you have a slew of your own. This sounds too good to be true. You have a perfect. You have. A I feel like I'm about new, to wake up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I feel like you're gonna wake up, and what's his name? The guy who was bullying you earlier is gonna be standing over you. It's all gonna be a dream. <laughs> like this is way too good. Or like the two angry Gaulish ship. people, like yeah. just knocked me out yeah. instantly. You have a like perfect new ship, great mm-hmm. handling, great crew of men. The off, yeah. the command it was really is heroic. Office, even though awesome, even though you're mm-hmm. like a brand new. Yeah, this doesn't make sense, especially for how low. Uh, my my patronage and patronage like yeah. why would they give you such great stuff mm-hmm. this is bad this is bad i'm, I'm scared now i was all happy in the morning you wake it. to a general hullabaloo classic hullabaloo gets classic. me every time hullabaloo on hotspot yeah hotspot hullabaloo <laughs> one of the good <laughs> old new band oh name. the hotspot boys are hullabalooing again <laughs> That's what they say in port when they see you guys having a hullabaloo. Yeah, do they? You guys don't go in to in to town. You just have a we, hullabaloo we on the hotspot. Yeah. <laughs> so like Michigan, Michiganders, yeah. hotspot, hotspotters. Is that like, like what I'm? Are those is, is that your title? Hotspotties. Hotspotties. <laughs> <laughs> Because, I mean, they do practically live on there for, like, years at a time. Yeah, I mean, so like for all intents land. and purposes, they... Are, they hot spotties. That's their the home. HMS, the HMS hot spotties. The Gaulish will fear the hot spotties. The hot spotties. The legendary hot spotties. Okay, but when you say it in that voice, it actually does sound kind of like... It does sound like... Oh, the hot spotties. See? <laughs> it sounds like something out of Pirates of the Caribbean. It sounds very, like, blackbeardish. Like, mm. uh, the mm. hot spotties are... Why did you read... You Why didn't have, I read it in that Yeah, you did a great accent. You could have totally read it like that. In, in the morning, wake to General Hullabaloo on the deck and in the streets of Chesterport. Peace has been declared between Albion and Gaul. Oh, what? Oh, that's lame. What are you going to do now? Pirate time! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we did always talk about starting a rebellion, so... Yeah, they're like, y- you won't go to war with them? Fine, we're just going to pretend to be the Gauls and fight you so you guys go to war and mm-hmm. be a little pirate. I think this, all of this is just a setup for you being a pirate. I need to pretend to be Gaulish and then attack an Albion like yeah. port just to start it again yeah. and then go back to being an Albion yeah. so I can fight for them again. <laughs> this is just all, all of this is just one big setup for you being a pirate because yep. nobody wants to do an adventure book where you're not a pirate. Yeah. You want to be the pirate. You want to be a little bit evil because pirates are like the per. they're like, I feel like they represent the American dream. Do they? Yeah. Really? English class. Like we'll conquering and stealing? Yeah, because like in in, <laughs> in Disney depictions, they're like good bad guys. I mean, in real life, not at all. They were terrible. They were yeah. horrible, horrible people. But in all like 
Disney iterations of it and like in Assassin's Creed as well they're like good bad guys mm-hmm. they st- steal from the rich give to the poor type Robin Hood stuff but like that was not at all true yeah it, it's strange <laughs> how we rom- romanticize pirates like and same thing with Vikings like the Vikings were yeah kind of it we're like they're a yeah rough. they murdered tons of people in really savage ways but that's cool yeah but hey Vikings we make a cartoon about them or something yeah well, I think Vikings, we kind of, like, understand that they were bad, but we think they're cool because they were bad. But pirates is completely opposite. We're like, yeah, they were good, right? Like, pirates were a good thing. No. No, they were very, very they, illegal. They pillaged everything. Yeah. They were the worst <laughs> thing ever. Oh, oh, the details are not uh, Oh, the details are not finalized yet, but documents have been signed and hostilities suspended. Before you know it, you find yourself once again in front of the captain who commands the port. But this time, to hear the unwelcome news that Hotspur is to be paid off. Hotspot. I'm sorry. Hotspot. Hotspot is to be paid off. That is that is decommissioned. The Admiralty won't have need of such a large fleet in peacetime. Your career has, for a moment at least, vanished in a puff of smoke and diplomats. See? Just like that. So now we're going to steal the Hotspot with the hot spotties. And we're going to go have a hullabaloo and become pirates. <laughs> and it's just mutiny against the entire... Might there be any chance of another command being available, sir? You ask def- uh, defer- and differently. Indifferently? No. Defer and... Deferredly? Deferentially. I pardon uh, pardon me for not being able to pronounce words good. I'm real bad. That pronounce was, words well. That was, uh, that was, that was a, an easy one. I goofed. The captain grimaces. I wish I could say, Mr. Smythe, there were... What are we going to do? Smith or Smythe? Pick one. What do you want to be? It's you. Yes. Horatio Smith or Horatio Smythe? I think... I Well, I think Horatio is so out there that I think the Smythe kind of reels it back in. Smythe, Horatio Smythe. That is true. They do that a lot. Okay, we're getting so sidetracked. There will be ships <laughs> need, needing captains, of course. We've read like two pages. There will be ships needing captains, of course, but there will also be a great many post-captains and commanders seeking positions. A bright youngster like yourself has a tolerable chance, but it may be some time. Oh, but it's not so bad. You're entitled to half pay, and of course you have your prize money. You should enjoy your leave. You will receive a letter when a command becomes available. How are you feeling about this? <clears throat> Uh, pleased. It will be nice to have a holiday, and I can manage. No, no, you don't want days I'm upset. Off. No I'm, days. Off. I'm very internally on a very real level uh, upset right now. It will be nice to have a holiday, and I can manage quite nicely on half pay plus prize money. I am confident that I will get another command before very long. Resigned. I serve the Navy in whatever capacity they require. I can be patient. Surely it won't be very long before I am offered another command. Nervous. I am uncertain how long I can survive any half pay, even augmented by prize money. And when if I, I am, and what if I am not offered another command? I am hardly trained for another career, for any other career. Is there a filled with furious rage option? Yeah, I was about to say there should be a fourth option for angry, slap the captain across yeah. the say, get get the hot spot, he's get on the hot spot and run. <laughs> I'm definitely feeling rage, so, so I, I guess your nervous. options are pleased, Which, resigned, and nervous. Okay. Yeah. A perfectly understandable reaction. One day, some weeks later, on your way back from drawing your half pay, you run into your old friend Bryce. Smith, what good luck to meet up with you. You must come dine with me tonight. I want to introduce you to my wife. Oh, he's got a wife. You enjoy the meal very much. Miss Bryce is a charming hostess, gracious and sweet and well-mannered. And Bryce is obviously devoted to her. After dinner, you and Bryce sit drinking rum and storytelling long into the night. Suddenly, Bryce says, So what about you, Smith? High time you got married, isn't it? He looks at you shrewdly and laughs. You're about to tell me you've been too busy to think of it. Well, you have plenty of leisure while you're on half pay. You should think about it now. You consider the idea. What do you conclude? Okay, so this is like this is like more character creation. Like, are you going to get married before you go off and be a pirate again or be in the Navy? Well, this is... I feel like... They're giving you a romance option. I like it. But, but like I could definitely. marry someone, but in the life of 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 a commander, like I disappear for years at a time, and I may or may not come back. And then if you become a pirate, that's even worse. Like that's yeah. like I mean, can you imagine? I'm like I'm risk. like Schrodinger's husband. She could like be the at- cat that's simultaneously alive and dead until you open the box. <laughs> I'm like every single day I'm at sea. What a great I'm basically analogy. alive and dead as a commander. Bryce, uh, what do you conclude? Bryce seems to have stumbled onto a good thing. It might be kind of nice to have something like this myself, a home to return to, a loving wife. Bryce is right. Marriage to the right kind of woman could be very useful as I try to advance my career. Useful? (laughs) Thinking purely utility. I like it. 
Marriage? No. Marriage? Not me. I don't want to be tied down to anyone. Not me. I don't want to be tied down to anyone. Yeah, that sounds really snarky. The idea of a wife has never held any appeal for me. It's not... <clears throat> it does say ahem in the writing. It does. That wasn't ad lib. It's not... <clears throat> it's not women I find attractive, you see. Oh, oh, they give you a nice option. Oh. They did do that at the start of the book, too. They give you a chance yeah. to be a woman, but then they wrote it in, like, very... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like this to try is, and change the whole story around and make them all very forward or not forward, uh, like with the times. You know, uh-huh. I appreciate that. I respect that. So which one? Okay. Well, I don't know. I I feel like it would be. Well, I suppose I would have to find a wife who who would be able to appreciate the fact that I'm disappearing for years on end. I just feel so bad though. Which one? Well, go with the, uh, the not the okay, utility so one. So your options are: it might be nice utility. No, or I'm not attracted to women. It might be nice. It might be nice. You agree that maybe marriage would be a fine thing if you could find the right person. That's the sp- that's the spirit, Bryce says approvingly. Miss Bryce knows several eligible young women. Come along to the assembly rooms tomorrow night, and we'll see if we can find you someone to introduce you. It sounds like it's picking out a car. Like, <laughs> yeah, I thought I was gonna say like, come to the back. We have like a couple in storage. Assembly rooms, like. <laughs> Oh, not like not like assembly assembly. No, I like, know what it meant, but like <laughs> it just sounds like it literally like you're picking out. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. The assembly rooms are crowded with young people dancing and flirting. In rooms off to one side, those disinclined to dance or flirt are playing at cards. You walk around the ballroom, getting your bearings, enjoying the pomp and circumstance and splendor. Suddenly, a voice you know cuts through the chatter around you. Mr. Smythe! You turn astonished. It is Lieutenant Villanueva. I don't remember who that is. <laughs> <laughs> that would be you, though. You'd seem to be like, I, Mr. Hello. Yeah, Vanilla. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can't forget a name like Vanilla. Wait, Vanilla. vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Vanilla. <laughs> How boring do you want your character to be? My name is Vanilla Stale. <laughs> Stale. <laughs> My name is That's a great last name. Mr. Stale. That is a great last name. Thank you. No. This book is all over the place. We just went from like 100% max action right down to like romance. Yes, yeah, it's gotten very romantic very quickly. Like, I'm starting to like. I'm a f- huge fan. This is great. They're <laughs> all over the place. They're making us get like a taste of everything. We taste want. of broadsides. He, he is not wearing the uniform of the Gaulish Navy, but is unmistakably the same man who you met aboard a Gaulish prize some time ago. The years since have treated him well. His skin is more weather-beaten, perhaps. Oh, this is that guy who could, like, barely speak to you? The Gaulish dude who you, like, let uh, let live and, like, but he was a prisoner. Remember, you had to choose if you would give him a oh, sword. Oh, that dude! But he's hey. an Albion. I mean, you guys are at peace Yeah, because we're, we're at peace. I wonder if you can speak good now. Well. The years since have treated him well. His skin is more weather-beaten, perhaps, and a scar se- uh, seems his left cheek. But he looks to be otherwise in good health and good spirits. And not, and not hurting for money either. He's dressed in a very fine linen shirt and a coat with gleaming gold buttons. And he carries a pair of elegant gloves such as a gentleman wears when dancing. He has clearly come to this assembly intending to dance. It is a small shock to you uh, to realize that a Gaulish officer is here as, as someone's invited guest. How do you respond? Mr. Vill- Villanueva, what a surprise. What on earth are you doing here? What a surprise. I'm a nice guy. Yeah. We, were, we were cured. You were, we, you were nice to we him. We had an understanding. Yeah, you like, gave him medicine. Yeah, remember? like I still had to imprison him for yeah, I'm obvious reasons. I'm curious if you would have chose that I'm not attracted to women. Like if this would have been this an alter- been a, alternative. This might have been a thing. Yeah. I mean, clearly ready to dance. Uh, I am in Albion visiting cousins of my mother. His Albanish, Al- Albionish comes more easily than it did when you first met, though it is still heavily accented. 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 I, accented, yeah, I was about to say. Like accentuated? Yeah. Now that there is a p- is peace, a gentleman may visit his relations in a civilized manner. A very fine thing, peace is it not? It permits gentlemen such as ourselves to interact in a civilized manner, as befits a gentleman. He really likes the word gentleman. <laughs> he's like one of those, he's like a really tough guy who just got given like something nice and he like starts flashing around like, ooh, gentleman, gentleman. Well, maybe it's like when you first come to a language, you use words that uh, are maybe like culturally gen- like used. It's a gentleman who's just not, he doesn't know how to be a gentleman, yeah. but he is. Like I could start saying dog all the time because I'm like, do people say dog, right? And you're just like, <laughs> no, they don't, not anymore. You bet. Uh, I mean, I'll be like that. There is something distinctly disagreeable about the way he pauses before he says gentleman and civilized. 
Oh. <laughs> you remember the two of you facing each other on the deck of the Gaulish prize ship and looking into Villanueva's eyes. You can tell he is remembering that too. What do you do? I can't be sure he meant it in the way I heard it. I let the insult pass. Oh, he's like, gentlemen. Yeah, because... As gentlemen do, because you didn't let him stay on board. You forced him down as a prisoner, which was the right choice. Yeah, I can't have mutiny, all right? It's not It's not but a ba- thing about being so civil. Angry. He's salty about it. He's salty. I can't... <laughs> you salty. This boy. I can't be sure he meant it in the way I heard. I push back a little so that he can retreat if, it, in fact, he meant no insult. I know danged well he meant it the way I heard it. I insult him back. He, ju- he just cast aspirations upon my honor as a gentleman. Honor demands I call him out. Gain, Yo, I could call him a out. Tact. Get a but he's a he he sounds like a rough and tough dude. He's got a scar. I know Any I, dude with a face scar is cool. You got a leg scar. I, I have a leg scar. Well, and I have like shrapnel in my arm. Yeah. They kinda like they were like your arm will never work quite well again and then yeah. never mentioned it after that. It probably just like decreased some of my yeah, dexterous stats by a little. Um so yeah, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna call him out. I'm upset. The, like the max call out. Like, one. how could he not understand? He just cast aspirations upon my honor as a gentleman. Yeah. Honor demands I call him out. Call him out. Call him like, out. I'm upset now. Gotta call him. How one v one me. How dare you say? I beg your pardon, sir. You say loudly enough that heeds all over the room turn heads. <laughs> the heads all over the room turn in your direction. Villa de Wave regards you sardonically. 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 I'm real I have bad. no idea what that means, actually. I'm real bad at this. There's not, there's nothing wrong with your ears. You heard me. I remember when I did his voice the first time. I was like really gaulish. Like I was really like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You nothing wrong with your ears. You heard me. Are you having a good time? I'm the worst with these. Voices. Are you enjoying yourself? Because I just can't keep track of them. This this book has so yeah, many. Yeah, you'd have people. to like sit down like beforehand and like get like your cast it's of characters, so like a character difficult. sheet, and, and like get all your voices insane. down. Price suddenly appears at your side. Smythe, what in the heck? Or, I'm sorry. H-E double hockey stick are you doing? He demand. He demands in a whisper. Oh, it's a whisper. Tell me that before so I can whisper. I have, I have been insulted, you say calmly. Oh, I have been insulted. More calmly than you oh. feel to tell the truth. Your palms are sweating. Knees weak, arms are heavy. Vomit on your sweater already. Mom's spaghetti. <laughs> Wait, no, it doesn't actually say that, right? No, it does. No, it doesn't. It does. No, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't say mom's spaghetti. Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, joke. It does not say. You've never fought a duel before. <laughs> <laughs> You've never fought a duel before. Um, When you were on that ship, that was pretty duelish. Yeah, I took like two One giant two, yeah. dudes, So To Villanueva, you say, I demand satisfaction, sir. I demand satisfaction, sir. Villain wave laughs. I am all willingness to oblige, sir. My cousin shall stand as my second. Who, sir, shall serve as yours? You look at Brycey. Bryce. Uh, I, I will, of course, he says heavily. Mr. Villain Web is the challenged party. Yours is the choice of weapon. Do you choose pistols or swords? Wow, this is very, um, honorable and gentleman. Like, they're so official. Like, they just whipped out, like, a contract or something. Like, you didn't even get into fighting. Instead of just having, like, a ballroom fight, you're, like, setting it up. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's wow, those days were weird. Do what you gotta do. You're dumb. I would've just... I just would've been, like, pistol. Grab the pistol, shot it. Like, done. No, 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 like, no. Because well, that would just be, like, wildly illegal. I feel like there's something about a duel that, like, makes it legal to kill someone. Because it's, like, it's like signing a waiver. You both understand that if you get stabbed, like, it's, it's <laughs> Oh, swords, of course, Villanueva says. A bullet might go anywhere, after all, but mm-hmm. steel, dot, dot, dot. Very good, Bryce says. We shall see you at dawn tomorrow. Okay. Ooh, at dawn. So at dawn tomorrow, you'll be fighting a duel. By breakfast time tomorrow, you might very well be dead. How did you get yourself into this mess? It's not the a next mess. Morning, this, dawns- is, this is destiny. <laughs> the next morning, <laughs> dawn. Yeah, of your death. The next morning <laughs> dawns unre- unseasonably cold, or maybe it just feels that way to you. You dress carefully in your uniform and buckle your sword <clears throat> at your side. Bryce appears and conducts you to the field where matters of honor are usually resolved. It is even colder here. A faint mist floats over the grass. Villeneuve is standing too far away for you to read the expression on his face. Bryce goes to confer with Christy Pelliard. Pierre? No, Pelliard. Okay. You said very French. You just pick out like two syllables and just go with that. 
uh, he comes back looking grim, and that doesn't help. You shall stand five paces apart, he says, and begin when the signal is given until first blood. Are you ready? Are you? We have a, a small in, uh, interruption here while Mitchell handles some very serious radio related business because he is student station manor, manager. Yeah, responsibilities. <clears throat> Uh, are you ready? Are you? Uh, not really, but I would never admit that. H-E double hockey stick, yeah. Heck yes. What? Your options. Oh. Uh, oh, like yeah. Okay, totally maybe you didn't hear that. Cast. I'll repeat it. Bryce Bryce said, you shall stand <laughs> five, uh, five, paces, five paces apart, he says, and begin when the signal is given, until first blood. Are you ready? Are you? Your choices are not really, but I would never admit it, uh, or heck yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. I wanted this. Of course, you say to Bryce. Good luck, Horatio, Bryce says. Oh, he called you by your first name. You don't hear that often. Mm -hmm. You face Villeneuve. You still can't read his expression. Christ de shouts the order to begin. Villeneuve, they never told us who that is. They just said, this is my second, but I don't think they said his name when they said that. I assume that's who it is. Like, yeah. And they give him a full, like, hyphenated name, like, like it's a person. It Villeneuve is. shifts at once into a guard position. You and he circle each other, eyeing, probing for weaknesses. Do you want to approach? Do you want to approach the, this duel cautiously and keep your moves mostly defensive, or do you want to mount an aggressive offense? Okay. Now, when it comes to fighting, I definitely want to be cautious. It's much more in my character to. You do so. Him. Villeneuve fights with reckless abandon, however, and one. Uh, and one particularly showy move leaves his right side unguarded. You lunge in to take advantage of the opportunity. His blade flashes out so fast you don't have time to react. You feel it slice down your left arm, hot as fire. You stagger backward, dropping your sword to clap your hand over the gush of blood. Far away you hear shouts of, First blood! And honor is satisfied! And you think you can hear villain wave laughing. Then you feel Bryce pressing his handkerchief to your wound. It's not so bad, he says, but you think he might be lying. Ah, it's not bad at all. Come on, Horatio. I know a saw. I know a saw bones can stitch it up for you. Bryce is at least partially right. It's not so bad. In there, there's no permanent damage or weakness, but you bear the scar for the rest of your life. Wow. Is it, is it over? Yeah, it's over. Well, Bryce oh. says several days later, we didn't get very far with finding you a wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we were supposed to be getting you a wife. Instead, you I got fought. I got distracted by your arms. By my been, honor, your arms have been tattered so many times. Yeah, wow. I got shrapnel in them, and then I just got my arms sliced by. You're a very strong person. We have uh, Carly joining us in studio. She. Are we doing this now? Yes. Oh, we're doing this. We're doing this live. Yes, you um. Are. There's um. Okay. We are adorning. Uh, what can only be described as the most appropriate wear for yeah, Ram Show for Ram participants, show. and like also for push what? Oh, okay, I see. They're um, their umbrella hats. <laughs> Uh, I figure so, I should. All you're, right. so, you're so calm. I get you. They're uh, umbrella hats. I, well, I figure the audience should know while we make strange noises in the middle of trying to read a book. I Is think this like more the interested in this than anything else. Yeah, like you just go Oh, and then these go out. These kind of go out there. And then I... I don't know if I can get this on. Well, how do I put this on my face, though? Yeah, how am I going to get it on with the headset on? You well, this. you have to put... on your face? Yes, just mount it Well, you could, like, right put the headset on, like, chin. here. Let's see if we oh, can kind of, like, put it under here. Mitchell's the smarter one. Okay, wait. How did... Wait, but there's things on all sides. They move around. How do I? It you move go. around. No, they but adjust. it's. Like your forehead. I got it on, which means I'm the smarter one. And How do you? Oh. You just like, it, it just sits yeah, on you just your head. Put it on there. Oh, just okay. There for, like support reasons. I understand. Feels like it's gonna pop off though. There we go. I can you probably still. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, feels like it's gonna pop off. I was trying to see if I could do it with my headset on. I can do that with this on. That's fine. If I just like put it under my bun, then like. Yeah, you can put it over your headset. Well, you're wearing a hat too, which doesn't help. Okay. Um, we are now officially protected from the rain Everyone. while indoors. You never know when yeah. a storm could come we might have in the midst of a radio roof. show. We this is how we have on... to do. Um, we have to start doing weather now. We have to start doing <laughs> it like this. Just like indoors. Get a green screen. Just with our. Um... This is a fantastic thumbnail. Well, let's uh, let's yeah. wait. Okay, pose for that. Uh, so and everybody, make sure thumbnail. now you have to check out our YouTube channel. 
Um, right now, WHS is all hosted on an account with my name. So if you just Google Mitchell Payne WHS, uh, you might find it. Then you can check out the Ram too. Show with the video, which is happening right now, and you can see us with our umbrella hats. Also, uh, it'll be posted on River Talks, which is my no. YouTube channel uh, uh, name mm -hmm. change pending. I haven't decided yet. It could be <sighs> devastating to my career to um, change that. You have uh, no followers. We, <laughs> you have like two. I have like three subscribers. I'm one of them. So if you had to. <laughs> and for all intents and purposes, you might as well have to. Okay. Anyways, um, these do feel like they're going to pop off my head. Uh, <clears throat> we're just going to continue on like nothing happened. Yeah. Well, Bryce says several days later, we didn't get very far with finding you a wife. The Williamsons are having a having a do tonight. A do. And it has like... A uh, do. Has like, like the bid you would do? No, it a just do? says... Oh, do. like... Just Wait. having a do. Like a space do. Yeah, like we are going to do a do. No. Do. They're having a do tonight. But, but what is That's a do? It. That's it. I don't know. Okay. But we're going to find out. But the out. do is separated by like hy <laughs> hyphens. Or, uh, uh, you uh, are having a do tonight. A supper party. Come along with Miss Sprites and me, and we'll see if we can't find you a likely looking girl there. Villain the Webster there again. <laughs> that would be funny. You put on your uniform... Shine your shows and accompany. Shine your shows. <laughs> oh my gosh, I am the worst. Come on, don't Shine don't beat your yourself shoes. up. You're and accompany good. Bryce and Miss Bryce to the Bryce. I wonder. W w it'd be funny if Bryce was his first name, <laughs> Miss Bryce. Uh, that's what I would like to imagine. Uh, to the supper party, the two modest rooms are crowded with people. Take a look around, Bryce. If you see anyone you'd like to be introduced to, just let me know. He's a great wingman. I'm just going to point that out. You spend a little time getting your bearings. Some people are sitting at card tables, playing at whist, playing at whist, playing at whist. What is a whist? Some are standing in, in the pleasant breeze that wafts through the windows, talking together. In the farm room, you see a, sol a small group dancing. This isn't a proper ball, of course, but it appears that the boulder among the young people have persuaded the pianist to play a tune to which they can dance. Hmm. As you wander through the rooms, you can't help but notice that many of the young women look admiringly at your, uh, admiringly at your uniform. Maybe it won't be so hard to impress one of them. You're using your uniform to get girls. I feel bad. There should have been an option to just come, like, dress. Just normally yeah. and not obnoxiously. I feel like all that did, uh, that fight did, was, like, change your options. Like, before, you were at a ball. Like, you had, like, a, you know, like, real proper yeah. way of finding, like, a really, like, a gentle lady. But now you just had, like, some bash. It's a do. <laughs> you're at a do. It went from a ball to a, a bash. You're at a do. <laughs> that accent is great. Three in particular catch your eye. A tall, proud-looking, golden-haired woman standing with the group in front of the window. A lively-looking redhead among the dancers who is laughing at a joke someone has just told. And a sweet-faced, brown-haired girl sitting quietly off to the sidelines. You ask Bryce whether he knows anything about any of them. Bryce chuckles. You got a good eye, Sm Smith. <laughs> Smut. Smite. Smitey. <laughs> Smith. The woman by the window is the most eligible youngster for miles. Miss Anne Hawthorne. Hawthorne. Miss Who, which one is that? It's the blonde. Oh, okay. Eldest child of old Admiral Hawthorne. Oh, you could gain something by this. Utility. No, I don't. Handsomest girl I've ever seen, barring, barring Miss Bryce, of course. Oh, good save. Nice. Elegant and accomplished and unusually clever, too. Can talk politics as well as any man in the room, if you can believe it. See? Utility. The redhead yeah. is Miss Susanna Musgrove. Fun-loving, always ready with a laugh or a pert comment. You'd never have the chance to be small if she was yours. Bit of a flirt, but hard to blame her when she's so good looking, isn't it? Good family too. Not wealthy and not uh, not wealthy, not any longer at least, but an old and respected name. Okay, so you have like a fun, fun loving choice as well. Not like the political utility. I'm I every time you say utility, I just it sounds shrink. terrible. It's awful. It, it doesn't sound terrible. It is terrible. But I'm just and thinking you should be like I I all about advancing yourself. Okay. No. No offense to women around the world. With everything else, fine. But even in a fictional romance, I'm not going to be <laughs> dating people out of utility. <laughs> and the little one sitting over there is Miss Be Beatrice West, a sweet youngster, very kind in her manner, so I've heard at least. She all she's also terribly shy, and I don't think I've ever heard her utter two sentences together. Miss West is the youngest child of a solicitor. Very respectable family, the West, though nothing like the Hawthorns or Musgroves, of course. 
So Bryce looks at you expectantly. To whom do you ask to be introduced? So let's go over the options before. Definitely, I, I already know which one you're. I already know which one you're. Yeah. Like. So you have uh, <laughs> the blonde Miss Anne Hawthorne, who's uh, a, from a great family. Her mm-hmm. father is in the navy. Yeah. She can also talk politics really well, which yep. might come in handy later. Miss Susanna Musgrove, who's fun and witty, uh-huh. maybe even like a pirate's apprentice. That would be my dream. Okay. Just have her like come on the ship with you. Uh-huh. Or Miss Beatrice West, who can't string two sentences <laughs> together. Yep. Uh, not because she's dumb, but because she's shy. She yep. comes from a good family, but not as good as the other ones. Right. And you're picking that one because yep. she's shy. Definitely. <laughs> that was hard to see coming. <laughs> Whoa, what a surprise. Maybe maybe it's just despite you because like she seemingly has the least utility, Rice but before. I bet she'll be like the most... Oh, so yeah. you are thinking about the utility. No, gotcha. I'm I'm thinking of the, gotcha. the un-utility. Bryce performs the introductions. This is my young friend Horatio Smith, a most up-and-coming young officer. Let me tell you, he must particularly he most particularly desired to make your acquaintance. Miss West looks at you. How very nice to meet you, she says. How very nice to meet you, she says. Does yeah. that... Does that yeah, talk to me like that. Really. Does that get you going? <laughs> Bryce, you're so fine, you say. Bryce winks at you and drifts away to talk with someone else. Bryce is the wingman of the century. And I have Bryce. <laughs> no, uh, what no, do you do next? Married. Ask me. <laughs> it's a great show. It's a great show. <laughs> what, do you do, what do you do next? <laughs> Umbrella hats malfunctioning. <laughs> Uh, ask Miss West to dance. Ask Miss West to be my partner at whist. Oh, that's a that's the card game. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna call it euchre from now on. <laughs> Re- regale Miss West with tales of my life at sea. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Ask her to dance, which doesn't really seem like her kind of thing. Ask yeah, it doesn't seem like with either you, of our which kind might of thing. be nice because you you know play something fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, regale her with tales of life at sea, which is just straight up bragging. That's yeah. That's yeah, that's obnoxious. Like I good. can't be that guy. So, cards so I have to go for the cards. Dancing. Yeah, cards, yeah, that sounds like a good choice. I feel like there should have been a, a fourth option for sit awkwardly next to her. <laughs> that would be me. So, uh, party, huh? Sit, sit awkwardly, get punch. Color, and, the, and then somehow you end up getting married and fall madly in love. Yeah, but that's all that's your conversations consist of. Oh, Miss West says, look, looking startled and alarmed. Oh, I, I thank you, but no, I am not a very good player. I prefer to sit here. Hmm. So if you want to get to know Miss West, you're going to have to sit there too. Well, there you go. Oh, That's the fourth option. we got the great. <laughs> Does that sound like something you want to do? Or would you rather excuse yourself and go in search of some other activity where there's a better chance of having fun? Dude. Oh. Uh, it would be... D- this hat, this hat, this hat. It would be discourteous of me to leave. And besides, I'd be willing to wager she's actually is fun once you get to know her. I sit down. I'd rather not court such a limp rag of a woman. <laughs> wow. Wow, Mitchell, I didn't know you were like that. Wow, Horatio. That's harsh. Such a limp rag of a Wow. I shouldn't. I shouldn't say that repeatedly. Someone's gonna clip, <laughs> not someone's to gonna clip that and ruin my career. <laughs> Non-existent. I make small talk for thirty seconds and beat a hasty retreat. No, sit down and uh, stay, uh, uh, man. Uh, oh, that's great. Goodness. <laughs> you sit down beside Miss West and regale her with tales of your adventures at sea. Oh, okay. So it. Oh, so they option. want you to. Okay. Um. At first, she seems too timid to look at you directly, but after a while, she relaxes and even starts to ask questions. Oh. Encouraged, you press on, telling Miss West about bloody tales and fearsome fighting and the prizes you have won. Somewhere along the way, you realize she is no longer looking at you. She shrinks away a little as though disturbed by your enthusiasm for battles and killing. Oh, no. You try oh. to recover, but too late. She answers you with the briefest possible response until you give up and excuse yourself. You missed your chance. You thought you were safe in radio. <laughs> Even here, you're getting owned. I'm absolutely heartbroken. Wow, this is terrible. We might have to take a break. I'm, I'm, I'm about recovers. to start crying. This is well. This is bad. Even is... even in a in a adventure book where you're a captain of a ship, you can't get girls. I am way too emotionally this hurt is right so now. So rough wow. for you. Maybe it wasn't such a good plan to tell bloodthirsty stories to such a shy like me. Just a thought. What do you do next? <sighs> what are my options? Wow. I'm really hurt for you. Thank you. Should have just asked her to dance. I was thinking about See, that. See, like, all the other things I was thinking, like, maybe we, it would have been, you know. All the other things that we... I'm wondering if you didn't have a chance with her at all. Like, like all... If you you only have a chance with one of the girls, but if you they're pick the others, they just keep narrowing it down. 
because they didn't want to like write in stories oh, for like each single one. I'm wondering if that's the thing. Because like dancing doesn't seem right to do with her either if she's so shy. Yeah, but it's like we're both shy, so maybe it works out. You get two shy people to dance, and that's special. Yeah, that might have. Dang, Mitchell. Dang, Mitchell. See, all the other times, if you get slashed in the leg, it's just like, all right, I have a scar for the rest of my life. No big deal. But losing Miss West. This is a real scar I will have for the rest of my life. It really hurts. What do you do next? I ask Bryce for an introduction to Miss Hawthorne. I ask Bryce for an introduction to Miss Musgrove. I go and join a group of gentlemen who are looking for a fourth for Euchre. I drink. <laughs> that's not what it says. It says whist. I drink too much and try to draw attention to myself so that some young lady will notice me and ask to be introduced <laughs> to me. All caps. It, it, it's me is in caps. I drink too much. Ask to be introduced to me. I'm not being introduced to them. They have to be introduced to me because I'm a fancy navy officer. Yeah, should I just go be miserable and just go drink by myself in a corner? It's your choice. And just wallow in agony. So you can be introduced to Miss Hawthorne, who was the political blonde miss musgrove who's the fun redhead um uh, go join a group of gentlemen for cards or drink too much and try to draw attention to yourself so that something like it will be introduced to you asked to be does it actually say too much Dr- i drink too much and try to draw oh, attention okay. to myself so that some young lady will be will notice and ask to be introduced to me okay well i obviously don't want to go overboard ha <laughs> overboard <laughs> ah choice of process overboard um, I don't, I don't know. Like, I feel so weird, like being introduced to one person, then immediately bailing, and then just asking to be introduced to anyone else. Well, like, see, that's how like dating I, works and stuff. Yeah, but it was it's like a party. It was like five seconds. The, there's no commitment to a lady like, you talk like to I, for. Like, I already seconds, picked someone else. Like, this is you second failed. choice. Oh yeah. I, I don't. don't want them to know I that. don't want to pick you're someone con- second. You're such a conscious young man. I. It's a great catch. Just, just join you, I'm Ms. done. West. Uh, I'm, wow, it's over, you're I'm so done. defeated. Don't be defeated. No, it's, you have I, a chance. It's, There's still two young eligible It's, it's not about having a chance forever. It's about I was interested one in one person. You didn't get that one. And it didn't work pout. out. I'm not pouting, okay? I just don't. Like, I don't want to. We're going to go on a brief intermission while to, me and Mitchell settle this like, non related to pirates at all conversation. <laughs> I don't want to, like, settle. Like, I, don't, I don't want to pick someone else that I wouldn't have picked in the first place. They turn out to be nice enough. It's a reasonably, enjoy, a reasonably enjoyable evening. How did it go? Bryce asks you as you head home together. Not very well, you admit. Ah, well, Bryce says philosophically, there will be other parties. Unfortunately, there aren't any during this particular <laughs> leave. Bryce, Bryce, Miss Bryce falls ill, and so the Bryces do not attend any other functions. Without them to act as your sponsors, you do not receive any invitations. I'm there it is. That. That's the whole romance section of the book. Yep. Gone. It's over. I'm... Wow. This is I'm traumatic. S- I'm I'm satisfied with this outcome. I'm satisfied with the choices that I made. It's I'm I'm serious. It's over. Like I was hoping that maybe by playing cards she would come back up to you and be like, "Oh, I'm sorry about earlier." But no. Wow. The peace with the Gauls does not last. Before long, hostilities have resumed and the Admiralty is back up, building back up in its Royal Navy to combat the Gaulish threat to the freedom of the seas. I think you should have just skipped that at the beginning when he asked you. You should have been like, "No, I don't need women. I I'm a." Navy I, I was interested. I felt that aching in my soul. It just didn't work out. That's okay. It happened. This is bad. <laughs> this is really bad. The letter arrives by special messenger very early on a cold morning. You slit the seal. It's a weird <laughs> word to use. Your orders are written in fine black script on heavy cream-colored paper. It reads, "You are requested and required to assume command of HM HMS Defender." Defender. You want to rename it? Can we go back to Hotspot? I think we should go back to Hotspot. We have to. Well, it's not the Hotspot, though. Like, we can't just go around abusing the name. Okay, fine. What do you want to name it? Uh, how about Windows Defender? <laughs> Norton Security. <laughs> Norton Security. <laughs> HMS Norton Security. <laughs> no, what do you want to name it? Give it a good name. What do you want? Like a good name? Well, give it any name. Serious, oh, funny, anything um, you want. What do you want? Give I'm going gonna, gonna to do the tribute to the internet. Where they um, they were trying to name like a boat, and they asked the internet for what they wanted the name to be, and the internet Definitely. decided a boaty McBoatface. <laughs> so it's gonna be the assume command of the, the HMS eight. Boaty McBoatface. <laughs> yes. You own command at last. Again, at the crack of dawn, you walk to the end of the log pier where you first catch sight of HMS Boaty McBoatface. 
It's not all that you might hope for. There are barnacles on the hole. The sails are tattered at the edges. The paint is worn. It's no better as you find yourself standing on the dirty, uneven deck, introducing yourself to your first and only lieutenant. On the ship you were on, he had three lieutenants. Yeah. I mean, one of them died, but he had three. You got one. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard, Bodie McBoatface, sir, says Mr. Benton proudly. I like that. Good name. Mr. Benton. Finest slew in the Navy. You liar. His uniform looks as if he put it on in the dark. <laughs> you, everything has gone from perfect to the worst. You lost your ship. You lost your crew. You lost your lieutenant. You lost your chance at a wife. I mean, at least I don't have a wife to disappoint. So <laughs> that takes care of that. This is <laughs> off. I wonder if you would have went for the political blonde with the connections if you would have got your nice ship back. That sounds awful, and I would have regretted Whoa. every second of it. No. That's how you would have played it. <laughs> so I would have played Mr. <laughs> Self-Efficient. You wouldn't know. The, I'm, that is it. I'm efficient. I get it. You're done. awful. He, I want the fastest track to being a pirate, okay? He wouldn't know the finest slew in the Navy if it raked him with a broadside. Wow, what an insult. You probably draw out the orders from the admir- Admiralty, placing you in command of HM's... HMS, see, they, it keeps saying HM Slew Defender, <coughs> but I'm just going to say HMS Bodie McBoatface. Mm-hmm. In command of Bodie McBoatface. I'm going to get rid of HMS. When you finish reading your orders aloud to the crew, you're officially the new master and commander of the Bodie McBoatface. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot a familiar <laughs> sailor. Master Mate Jones! Yes! <gasps> Jones! One good thing came out of all of this. I'm happy again. We have Jones uh, back. Make that just... Jones, since he was disrated in connection with that unpleasant business with Mr. Piggott back on Bodhi, uh, back on HMS Courageous. He died. He greets you with a respectful salute. That he's obviously disappointed to find himself in your command again. What? <laughs> As if you didn't have enough to worry about. Oh, yeah, you kind of like made him angry. Did I? I'm still keeping his voice, though. I- Captain Smith, sir, says a middle-aged man coming up from below deck. Oh, no, that's not. I read for the wrong character. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Carter reporting for duty. I'm the senior master's mate and acting master acting master of the, of Bodie McBoatface. He's the master's mate. I think that's what Jones used to be. Hmm. A post captain would have a sailing master under him as the most senior warrant officer. But on, the slew, on, the, on a slew, the commander is technically also the master. You still have a few master's mates. Experience ratings working to get their warrants as masters in the Royal Navy. Mr. Carter, as a senior mate, will fill the role of the slew's sailing master in all but title. Mr. Carter, you reply, make the slew ready for some shakedown maneuvers. I want to see her capabilities. Aye, aye, sir. You inspect Carter carefully as he readies the slew for basic action. You quickly realize that this man is the only force holding the slew together. Hmm. Benton gives orders, but Carter has them followed. Under Carter's guidance, you manage to get the slew out onto open water. So Carter's your... He's your your lad. He's My he's boy. your master's mate. He's your he's your friend, and he gets it done. I feel like we should give him Jones' voice. Can we just like extract a voice from no, one character? No, man, you okay, can't no. be. Can't I'll give be him a different that. voice. I'll find something. The shakedown maneuvers are embarrassing. You sail the slew around, clear for battle, and fire off a broadside. The sails are not hauled taut. It takes longer to raise and lower the sails than it should, and it takes much longer, a full minute or more, to clear the slew for action than it ought. The broadside is ragged and slow, and one sailor injures himself by getting his foot crushed by a gun carriage. Mm. At this point, you believe that overall the crew is fairly unhappy and poorly disciplined. You're going to have to turn the slew into a credible fighting festival. <laughs> to do that, you'll have to put the men to work. It looks like this crew isn't particularly used to hard work, used to hard work yet. Where do you want them to focus their efforts? Wow, so you're, you were at the top, starting from the bottom now. Again. You have to build your way up. Because we were captain once. Got demoted. Got a captain again. Yeah, but that was... Yeah, that well, you weren't it, really it, a captain. It, yeah, it was a I was a pseudo-captain. This is it. This is where it starts. But this I had a nice building. boat. You're building everything now. This is where you cement the foundations for being an uh, amazing captain. Where do you want to focus... Where do you want them to focus their efforts? Uh, yeah, efforts. Drill them on gunnery. Practice sailing maneuvers. Clean the slew completely. Sailing. Always about that sailing. All about that sail. About that. No. Tra- okay. I'm sorry. For day for day after day, you drill <laughs> the men on sailing. You hoist all sail, then send the hands to a loft to lower and reef the sails. 
As soon as the last top men is back on the deck, you send them back up to Unreef and spread the sails again. You tack into the wind, rapidly switching your sailing points and drilling the crew on switching tacks. Tax. Then you bring the slew about and order the crew to quickly set the sails to run before the wind. As soon as they are done with the adjustment, it's time to turn across the wind. When the men have adjusted again, it's back to tacking into the wind. The work is hard and requires constant attention. Any carelessness aloft could be deadly. Mr. Carter time. Mr. Carter times every maneuver with a tongue lashing or worse for any sailor who is slow about his duty. By the end of the day, the men stagger down for their dinner, and the next day, starting with a tired crew, you do it again. After several days of this brutal regimen, you see real improvement. The men are more alert, quicker in responding to the changes you order. The crispness... They love this word. Crisp, yeah. The crispness and speed of the slew's maneuver improves, and you find that the slew is both more maneuverable and faster than you had thought when you first assumed command. <clears throat> the men groan as you order them aloft each day, but slowly they are becoming a credit to the Royal Navy. However, it's clear that they haven't had to work this hard in quite some time. You manage to overhear a few surly grumbles from the crew, though you don't manage to catch any particular, particular sailor grumbling. Your options are keep working them as hard as they can, or let's take it easy for now. Another reminder of your stats, your patronage, 26. But that's in respect to the Navy. You're tacked 33%. Yeah. Ugh. Leadership is 71%, though, and your likability is 46%, which is 46? That's did, decent. Did it go down? Um, no. I thought it was above. Uh, it's, it's decent. Okay, it's decent. It's below average. Your leadership is great. Your yeah. leadership is one of your best things. How can but, I have no tact but high leadership? Right. That's the real question. So they listen to you, but we're not sure why. They don't like you. They don't yeah. fear you. But for some reason. I just have a way with words. I think that is like how it always is, though, with like the perfect. Like in the mo in movies, you see someone and you're like, he's so smart. He does everything right. But he's not intimidating and nobody likes him. That's what you are. Like you're, I, I feel like that's actually how it is with me. Like you're I, like the I'm ideal not intimidating. captain, but you just don't you don't take time to do all that other stuff that yeah. would otherwise get you respect. Right. So what are you gonna do? Keep working them as hard as they can, or let's dig it easy. I don't want to mutiny, so you give them a break. Yeah, we're not in any rush. That's all right. In compensation for how hard you've been working them, you give that you've give them a rope yarn Sunday, a day when <laughs> it's in quotes. <laughs> a day when their duties are cut back to the bare minimum necessary to keep the slew sailing. Even though the rope yarn Sunday doesn't fall, on an actual Sunday you let them relax as if it did, and in fact more than on most Sundays. Some of the men skylark on deck while others take to gambling and similar recreations. The mood of the crew improves dramatically as the men have some time to, to themselves and a little bit of opportunity to relax. Unfortunately, a, re a relaxed mood is not necessarily what you want in the Royal Navy. You begin to notice that some of the men are slow to the touch their uh, their brows when they address an officer and even forget to say sir when they ought. The omissions are small, but the Royal Navy requires shows of respect for a reason. As the rope yarn Sunday ends, the men grumble about returning to their duties, muttering ar among themselves and taking their time in obeying their orders. The slew's happiness, uh, the slew's happiness increases, but its discipline decreases. You believe that overall the crew's fairly unhappy and poorly disciplined. So those are like your stats. Right, you don't get to they see said them, that before, right? But this is, yeah, this is written. Happiness increases, discipline decreases. Mm. Fairly unhappy, poorly disciplined. So, so it's, it's still like, bad. Yeah, it's like constantly going up and down. You have to balance stuff. You've right. played games like that before. Like the click, like uh, those text-based games you play, I imagine, mm. revolves around the mm -hmm. that. you got to balance them, but somehow make them go up at the same time. <laughs> It's a difficult crew, sir, volunteers, Mr. Carter. Many of these landsmen, landsmen came from the jails. I've done what I can with them, but the previous captain and his lieutenant struggled to keep them in line. Here's your options. Punish the whole crew harshly. <laughs> Identify the worst sailors and punish them. Punish lightly. Don't punish at all. Punish the whole crew harshly. Please. I'm, I'm, Please. I'm really tempted to just... Hey, you guys got a free day. What are you doing? Listen, like, I granted you a free day, okay? I gave you the time so that you could enjoy what you were doing. But if you are going to go out of your way to be slow is to this, raise you your brow you to me. Okay, I guess I'm going to say that. Punish no, harshly. not raise punish. your hand to the brow. A hand to the brow. Salute. You raise your brows, too. Just be like, oh. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> <laughs> so punish them, the whole crew harshly? Yeah, punish, punish them all. If I perceive any, if I perceive any one of you to be behaving with contempt toward your superior officers, you explain all of you will be punished equally. The entire crew gets double work duty, 
Worse, you cut them off from rum completely for about a week. This doesn't win you any congeniality points with the crew. Some of them are really starting to hate your guts. Fortunately, <laughs> it's mainly the worst sailors who hold a grudge, as they soon find that their fellow seamen are enforcing discipline. Hey. Nobody wants to have that happen again. Discipline increases, but happiness greatly decreases. Worth. You're balancing. One evening, you head below deck as some of the men are taking dinner. You find Jones telling a body joke about the le less less chivious habits. Less chivious. Do you know what that word means? It sounds sketchy. Well, yeah, we know what it we know what it sounds like. In context, so habits of women in London. He tells it quite well. You hadn't noticed before, but Jones has a certain natural charisma about him that makes <laughs> others turn to listen to him. Chastise Jones for beha for behavior becoming a sailor. Have Jones whipped. Keep an eye on him, but do nothing for now. Tell a body tale of my own. Oh no, you're like the hip dad. Like I eh, yeah, I I'm not go gonna just walk in and just start telling body tales. Everybody already hates me. So your options are chastise him for his un for behavior unbecoming of a sailor. Have Jones whipped or keep an eye on him, but do nothing for now. I'll just do nothing for now. I, I, I think this is a situation I should just let happen so that people can be happy. At this point, you believe that overall the crew is fairly unhappy and poorly disciplined. A few Wait, fairly oh, unhappy? Fairly unhappy and poorly disciplined. I feel like that was your chance to discipline them even harder. Well, yeah, but it's like I didn't want to make them even... You just lost all that discipline. No, I didn't want them to be it. even unhappier. Damn. They were already poorly disciplined even after I feel like, like you week. should just go full discipline and not care. That's I don't want to mutiny. A few days... A few days late, Mr. Carter brings you. A few days later, Mr. Carter brings you a lands, landsman sailor whom he found asleep on watch. Terribly sorry, sir. He mumbles groggily. Terribly sorry. <laughs> Whip him soundly. <laughs> arrange a questionable in parentheses jury to have him court-martialed and hanged. Oh, oh, whoa! That went zero to one hundred. Put him on double watch and forbid him from rum. Let it slide. <laughs> wow. Wow. That. Escalated. So questionable is in reference to you stacking the jury. Right. Him. So me just definitely trying to execute him. Yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna execute someone. That's the worst you need thing. To, okay. This is the problem. In these situations, they catch you with trying to be too good of a guy. Have you ever played Fable uh, Three? No. Fable Three. The end game. It. Oh, spoilers. Huge spoilers. By the way, huge, gigantic. Like, if you ever intend on playing this, will ruin the whole game for you. The end game, which a lot of people were, like, not a fan of because it was so weird. Like, it was such a strange mechanic. It's basically this big, bad evil uh, that is, like, trying to destroy the world. And you have a bunch of uh, money. Like, you're the king of, the of like, basically the world. And you have a ton of money. And you get a bunch of choices uh, from people that you met along your journey. This is, like, the very end of the game, by the way. So, it's just a weird time to be doing this. But you get you just basically get faced with all these choices at once. There's no like intermission. It's just like you're sitting on a throne and a bunch of people come to you. You have like two options in most cases. Like entertain the like give the money to what the money needs to go to, like what is obviously the bad choice, like what obviously like give it to the military or give it to the guy who's like using child labor or what, or give it to the people you made promises to all the time. But then it conflicts with you. You're like, okay, what if I give some to them and then some to him so that way it kind of balances out mm -hmm. and whatnot? Whereas that's the worst possible choice you can make. If you go, you need to commit to one. If you go all with giving it to what seems like the bad option but is like necessary, like the necessary evil, in the end you have so much money built up and spent in the right areas or just saved that when the big bad comes, you defeat it. Or if you give it to everyone that, say, that, everyone that you help, like if you go full good guy, it also benefits you somehow. Hmm. It, like they all like help you or something. But if you cut it right down the middle, you have no you strength just, just anywhere. Nothing. Jack, uh, Jack of trades, master of none. You need to commit to something. Do you want me to execute him? You either need to go full discipline, full necessary evil, or you need to go like nice guy. We're chilling it out. Here. All right, I, I'm so hurt over the wife situation. So just full discipline. Just, Hang him. Just yeah, just get it over with. I'm upset now. You assemble all three man court martial. Your lieutenant, the master, and you, the court martial, in quotes, jury is clearly uncomfortable about your decision, <laughs> but neither of them can muster an argument in disagreement. After all, you are duly appointed master and commander of the slew, and the twenty sixth and the twenty sixth article of war clearly states no per quotes <clears throat> no person in or belonging to the fleet shall sleep upon his watch or negligently perform the duty imposed on him or forsake his station upon pain of death or such other punishment as a court-martial shall think fit to impose, and the circumstances of the case shall require. 
Admittedly, the article does leave a bit of wiggle room. You certainly could have just whipped him. Perhaps, perhaps the circumstances of this case required more drastic measures. As they watch the young sailor's feet dangle from the yard arm, the crew begins to realize to what depths you will reach to enforce the discipline on your slew. Happiness decreases greatly, but discipline increases. What have you done? <laughs> I just convinced you. <laughs> You're a terrible person. As you head below deck, you see a handful of sailors and midship... Oh. No. Mutiny. Midshipmen whispering together, including Jones. As soon as they catch sight of you, they stop abruptly and go to... Wow. Not Jones. Deja vu. Oh, wow. It literally says deja vu. <laughs> I was just thinking How about that. that. Yeah, because this They was... stop abruptly and go their separate ways. You experience a brief moment of deja vu, as the Gauls call it. Oh, that's Gaulish, apparently. Deja vu. Or, you know. Loudly ask about what they were whispering... Loudly ask what they were whispering about. Pull one of them aside to ask what they were whispering about. Whip them soundly. Use a spy to find out what they were discussing or do nothing. Well, asking loudly just won't work. It's like what I want to do initially, yeah. but it just won't work. What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you guys, what do you guys, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to our, our psychopathic tendencies. I'm going to send in a spy. Send in a spy. Let's see how that yeah. works. You pass their names to Mr. Carter. Watch them, Mr. Carter. Aye, aye, sir, I will. At this point, you believe that overall the crew is very unhappy, yet reasonably disciplined. There are definitely some bad apples in the crew. The next day, Mr. Benton reports that Mr. Carter has died in a fatal accident. Fallen down the hatchway, sir. He must have overbalanced. No. They did not. Do you think it was really an accident? Of course. Absolutely not. This was murder. I'm not yet sure. It was murder. It was murder. This was one. That does not just murder. happen. Mr. Carter was an experienced and expert sailor. The only explanation for his death is murder. And since you doubt Benton killed him, you know that you didn't. That you didn't. <laughs> and you know that you didn't. Are you sure? <laughs> That's t tantamount of, to mutiny. So the question is, what are you going to do about it? Investigate the murder. I know he was murdered, but I don't know by whom. Seize the most likely suspects and proceed straight to a court martial. It's better to firm to be firm and swift in response than to be right. Think about it some more. I have to respond correctly, and that's more important than acting quickly. Ignore it, at least for now. Starting an investigation could lead to an open mutiny, and I can't risk that. Wow. This is tough. Firm and swift. I'm mad. <laughs> Court martial everywhere. Are you sure that's what you want, to, you, you want to do? This begins, Mr. Benton. We have no... I feel like this is where they are, like... From the author's standpoint, they're, like, constantly testing you. Like, are you sure? Are you sure? It's uh -huh. like on Price is Right when the guy knows which... Uh, which door the car is behind? Mm. He's like, "Are you sure? Are you sh are you sure you don't want to switch to one?" Mm. I'm glad you're committing. I'm very proud of you because because they, they want you to waver. They want you to like be, pull back and be like, "Okay, maybe I've been a little too harsh." Pull back and then bam, you right in the face. Are you sure that you want to do this, sir? Begins Mr. Benton. We have no real evidence against these men. I'm not even convinced that Mr. Carter was murdered. It's a mutiny, I tell you, you reply, perhaps a bit more forcefully than you <laughs> intended. You continue lowering your voice. If these men turn on me, don't, don't, don't turn on you too, Mr. Benton. We need to have to get the rest of the line. Understand any of that? Yep. Yes, sir, but hanging men on such little proof? Is that what we've come to? Benton is in it with them. Have them hanged. <laughs> I proceed with the plan. The slew needs hanging to, to restore discipline. I, I, Benton's right. I can't do this. What? Those are your options. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were just having, nah, like, major I mood know. swings. No. Okay, wait. So give me my options again. Benton is in it with him. Have him hanged. I proceed with the plan. The slew needs a hanging to restore discipline. I, uh, Benton's right. I can't do this. I shouldn't hang him, too. That's... I proceed with the plan. Just proceed with the plan. Just do it. Just stick to it. This discipline in the slew is more important than the lives of a few sailors. You assemble a drum head court martial and present the evidence. Mr. Barton, Benton, and the slew's master's mates form the body of the court martial, and they are clearly troubled, but you prevail on them to convict Allen and Green. Soon enough, they hang by the neck until dead for their crimes. There's grumbling around the slew. You had no real evidence and simply accuse, accuse these few sailors for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. But you've also taught your crew that your wrath is something to be feared. I wonder how you can sleep at night after murdering some innocent sailors. Discipline increases, but happiness decreases tremendously. You are now in a difficult position of selecting a new acting master. Mr. Carter's two mates both leave something to be desired. There's McDougal. McDougal, the senior mate, he's intelligent, but he usually diverts his intelligence towards finding a clever ways to avoid work. You doubt he'll set a good example for the crew. Then there's Avery, the junior mate. He's staunchly loyal to you and to the ship, but that's about all you can say for him. He's a simple-minded, to put it kindly, a moron, to put it plainly. So he's like, 
is completely loyal to you, but really dumb. I feel like that's what you want. Yeah, I need Dude, loyalty. Thir, I, I, I need... got it, thir. I'm going to do it, thir. Yeah, I need, like, the support on like, the um, ship. Like, um, me now. uh, uh, Mice and Men, um... I should never read that. George and... Lenny. He's like, Lenny, you're George. You're a terrible person. Sure. <laughs> I wonder if your tact has gone up. Tact is 36, likability 46. I think go up. Honor 22. I don't think any of this is going No, up. tact used to be, like, 33. It is 33. Oh, you said it was 36. It was 33. Lied to me. Of course, there's also Jones. No. No, he's Jones doesn't clearly, like me anymore. He's clearly been. As commander of the HM... Oh, I'm sorry. As commander of Bodie McBoatface, you have the authority to restore him to his old grade as master's mate. You could then promote him to acting master. Jones would certainly appreciate it. It might help to have a strong, another strong friend on the crew. Is he a strong friend? No, I feel like he's... <sighs> but remember the good old days of... Ah, ah, sir. Uh, that's a tough choice. Oh, McDougal, man. Avery, or Jones? Just, just, yeah. Just give me Avery. Just give me the plain and simple. A few nights later, you awake with a start to the sound of shouts and clanging metal outside your cabin. Oh, no. oh, good. You swing out, out of bed, grabbing your sword. Just as a team of armed sailors breaks down the door, they are led by Jones, whose face is twisted and sneer. Not so powerful now, are you? He says scornfully over his shoulder. You can see a sailor bleeding to death on the deck outside. Throw down that sword. Do you? I can't win. I throw down my sword. Never. Never. You are. You look so hollow. Never. Everything not, is. Not gone my ship. Bad. Not my ship. You, lo- you lost your your great ship. You lost the girl. You got your new ship, which is trash. You've been a terrible commander. You've caused a mutiny. Avery's probably the one dead on the floor. You Carter's dead. Jones hates you. Not my now sh- they caught you with your brains down. It's it's this might be a this might be a very short series. You attack and even manage to wound one of the mutineers, but there are far too many of for them to hold out against you. Get them, boys! They seize you and drag you up on deck. You shout for help, and a few loyalists come to your aid, but it's clear the numbers are against you. The whole crew has turned itself to the goal of murdering you. With a convulsive effort, you pull away from the sailor restraining you. One of the loyalists throws you a sword. Your only hope at this point is to try to fight your way to a lifeboat. lifeboat. Your options are never surrender. I will die on the slough if I have to. Or try to fight your way to lifeboats. Never surrender. You struggle on valiantly and kill several of the mutineers, but the numbers are simply too many. Your handful of loyalists are quickly dispatched, and one man can't take on an entire slough. Certainly not with that shoulder wound. Soon enough, cold steel punctures your lungs. All is dark. You have died. Thanks for playing Choice of Broad Science. I think, um... I think we should probably end it there. Wow. I, uh... This is rough. I was so connected to the story. I got much more invested in it than I thought I would. And uh, I, I, I just want to say, I am confident in every decision that I've made thus far. <laughs> from double loading the cannons to, to failing on Miss West. Yeah, to to failing in the in the romantic department and just murdering everyone. Yep. I was just taking out some of that. We didn't even get to, like, the thick of it. We didn't even get to the action. I don't know how much more story there was. I thought it was going to, like, end with you, like, settling down with a wife and the story just ends. I don't know how long this is. So, uh, do you want to go to a whole new story or try and pick up somewhere else? We could we could replay. I mean, that's that's normally what you do with those choice games is, like, with the book. If you mess up, you just go back. Can, but you, there's no I back still, button, is there? Yeah, no, there's not. I can I can do it. I can get I can get us back to a point. You just gotta tell me which point. It might take me a bit, but we could do that. No, I mean that's that's the story. That's what happens. That's how it turns out. You don't want to find out what would have happened if you would have danced with Miss West. If you would have commanded your ship a little differently. You don't want to know. I made my choice, River. That's it. I made my choice. All right, guys. Welcome to Choice of Dragons. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, we're gonna. This is this is this is the saddest thing I have encountered in 
Horatio Smith is gone. We're gonna we're gonna sign off for this episode. I'm definitely in my free time. I'm gonna go back and restore us to the point where you were about to dance with Miss West. Yeah, I, that's um, the only part I would be interested yeah, no, just to see what the potential outcome is. I'm definitely gonna go back to that. She'll probably just say no. You're so connected to this fictional girl. You're like, I need one more chance. I'm no. definitely gonna go back. So uh, join us next time to figure out what happens. <laughs> well, well, you know what happened. He's gone. You got got my dad. Uh, so join us next time for maybe choice of dragons or possibly back with choice of broadsides we'll see what uh mitch mitchell wants to do um thank you it's it's been swell horatio i think i i as your narrator yeah. your humble narrator uh-huh. i think you did a fantastic job I think you Con- convincing me to start a movie yeah no i that was <laughs> basically i think you did a fantastic job it just didn't the 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 time wasn't right, you know. You weren't you were born in the wrong place at the wrong time. You were born a gall. That's the real issue. Yeah. You were meant to be. I'm I'm not gall. upset really. I'm not except for anything except Miss West. That I'm, was the only even that because I mean if she had done something that didn't make her happy, I wouldn't want that either. You were such a so nice lad. with the way that everything turned out, you know, as long as I can be. I can say to myself, I'm confident. You can't say to yourself because you're dead. In the decisions that I made, you know, like I mean, in those last moments, even fighting off this mutiny, like you stuck to I'm, it. I'm, yes, like you I were, said, this is my decision. I'm not gonna back out. You owned it. I'm not gonna change my mind. This is what I'm doing. You know what I just realized is you literally became Mr. Piggott. Yeah, basically. A lonely, angry, bitter disciplinary. Man, I kind of feel bad for throwing throwing Piggott over now. I don't. Maybe he was onto something. No. He he died sticking to the discipline. I certainly like deserved you. the mutiny. Don't get me wrong. But I'm very confident Did in... Did Piggott? Yes. He was awful. He was doing just what you would have done. What you did. I mean, if people are upset enough to where they want... Where they have actually gotten to the point where they're going to commit mutiny, the mutiny is deserved. Is it really, though? I wonder what would have happened if you would have went full discipline from the get-go, like no Sunday, whatever. It was I'm called. sure there was just a threshold where if happiness hit a certain point, oh, and then yeah, so I when I hit massive that execution, was, that mode. was a bit of my problem with this. Is it did mm. seem too statistical? Like it wasn't like if we were reading a book; it was like all on the stats. Like happiness yeah. has gone down. Or like you had to balance it too. Much. Yeah, like they said, you wanted to, they wanted you to balance it because if you had no discipline, I feel like if you would, yeah, no discipline, you would have had a mutiny. Like they would have been like, yeah, you're a great guy. We're gonna leave you on this island. Bye. And you yeah. would have just been like, oh yeah, that's fine, yeah. fine, cool, yeah. That's they would have fine. had that's some hip. power Guess, grab. Guys coming it. back for me. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you're uh, at home watching the YouTube video. Thanks for joining us with our umbrella hats and puffy faces. I think th- these umbrella hats were needed to cover mm-hmm. us from all this the This is a really good way to finish it from out. From all the tears. Yeah. Uh, th- thanks again, Carly, for the umbrella hats. <laughs> nice. I will, uh, I, I, I will in, the, in the passing days, in the following days, I will keep a close eye on Mitchell and make sure that he's not too heartbroken over his mm-hmm. best and his loss of that was, ratio. That was pretty harsh. Um. If you are listening on the radio and you missed uh, parts one and two, because this is basically part three of this, right? Yeah. Then uh, and last part, go to YouTube, uh, WAHS, uh, Mitchell Payne. I'm sure it'll appear up. Or Ram Show. That should show up, too. Thank you, everybody, so much for listening. You've been listening to 89.5 WAHS, Auburn Hills. And we will catch you next time if we keep doing books. Next up is Choice of Dragons. Um Maybe I'll meet a uh, Miss East who will also reject me, and that's fine. Any anything <laughs> left to say? <laughs> that was bad. That was painfully bad. I was just like looking at something on my phone. I'm not gonna lie, kind of zoned out, only to hear that. Yeah. And wow, that was terrible. Yeah, I definitely want to go now. That was it, bad. It, it wouldn't be a Ram show if it didn't end that with was, wow. That was terrible. So bad. See you next time. This is Brendan Hart, and I'm going to be rocking through my senior year here.